platform. Uh, so uh, we can get right to, right to, right started and right at it. Uh, first question for you, Jim. Go ahead. Jim? Me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> not used to that, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary, at the, at the uh, you mentioned that you had discussions on engagement with, discussions with Minister Singh on having engagements with like-minded partners in a multilateral grouping like the Quad or ASEAN. How do you see that materializing? How do you see that operationalizing, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I, uh, Clearly, from a defense perspective, um, we, we do have a number of things in common. Uh, and um, if you just look at the countries overall, if you look at Australia, India, uh, Japan, us, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we really are interested in maintaining a, a free and open uh, Indo-Pacific region. Uh, we're interested in being able to navigate the seas and, sit and uh, fly the skies in international uh, space uh, and maintaining that degree of flexibility. Now, if you look at the fact that, you know, India and us are the largest democracies in the world, there's clearly some shared values there that we'll continue to work together to, to uh, we can build upon that and we are building upon it. We've got economic interests. Uh, so, so there are a number of things that uh, that we can and will work on going forward. Jim. And if I could just ask a follow-up: Does this mean you anticipate having more Indian officers in American headquarters and vice versa, and more more uh, exchange in like professional military education and perhaps larger exercises with the uh, countries out here? Well, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, these are all mutual agreements in terms of the directions that we're want, we want to take. Uh, and clearly, in terms of increasing interoperability, then extra, more exercises are good. Um, and uh, so, you know, so we'll see. But, uh, but again, uh, we can expect that uh, there'll be, you know, frequent uh, exchanges and and uh, we look forward to the ability to, to work together to, to build greater capacity, greater, greater capability going forward. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Secretary. Welcome to India. Um, do you share the concern expressed by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chief that uh, India was trending away from democracy? And in his letter to you, he suggested that um, the crackdown on protesting farmers, intimidating journalists, and government critics was problematic. Do you, do you share that concern? You've heard President Biden say that, uh, you know, human rights and, uh, and the rule of law is important to the United States of America. Uh, we always lead with our values, and, uh, you know, as a democracy, that's, that's pretty important to us. Uh, and again, India is a democratic country, and and they, uh, you, you treasure your values as well. So there are a number of things that uh, that we can and will work on together. So. More. Uh, hi, Mr. Secretary. Thanks for doing that. Um, I just wondered if during your discussion with uh, Prime Minister Modi or Minister Singh uh, during those meetings, did you press them not to buy the S four hundred, and what problems would that purchase pose for the U.S. media relationship? Well, are we, uh, we have, uh, countries that we work with from time to time that, uh, uh have, uh, Soviet or, or, excuse me, Russian equipment that they've acquired over the years. And we certainly urge all our allies and our partners to, uh, uh, to, you know, move away from Soviet or, or excuse me, Russian equipment. In some cases, it was Soviet equipment because they bought it so long ago. But uh, to move away from that and uh, and really avoid uh, any kind of uh, acquisitions that would would trigger sanctions on our behalf. Um, there, there's there's been no delivery of uh, an S four hundred system, uh, and so that conversation uh, that you know the issue of sanctions is not uh, not one that's uh, been discussed. 
uh, but uh, but we did address with the with the Minister of Defense the issue of the S-400. So. so if I could just follow up, the Congress has now sanctioned Turkey over the purchase of the S-400. So this must be something that is on your mind and their mind. So is that is sanctions on the table? Uh, again, they have not record not acquired uh, an S-400 system yet. So there would be no reason for sanctions to be on the table. So that, that's the, the agreement that they have. They have a delivery that they have an agreement to purchase that system. Yeah, we were aware of the fact that they, they have expressed an interest uh, in acquiring a system. But again, that system has not been delivered. So. Uh, I lost. Oh, I'm sorry. Philip. Philip. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, China. Uh, in the last one year, because of the tensions with Ladakh, had, has U.S. at any point of time thought that a war between India and China was imminent? And also as a follow-on, what do you think how India and U.S. can collaborate together to counter the Chinese aggression, not just in uh, Ladakh and in borders with India, but also in the Asia-Pacific region or Indo-Pacific, as you would say? So let me make sure I have your question straight here. Uh, is the first part of the question whether or not we thought a war between China and India was imminent? Yeah. And the second part was? The second part was, how do, what do you think India and U.S. can do together to counter Chinese aggression? Do you feel that India needs to do more with U.S. in terms of joint patrolling, uh, in terms of more collaborative approach in the Indo-Pacific? Mm -hmm. Well, on the first part of the question, the answer is no. To my knowledge, uh, we've never uh, considered there, that uh, India and China were on the, on the threshold of war. Uh, the second part of the question in terms of uh, what can be done to check uh, Chinese aggression in the, in the region, I think, I think that continuing to work with like-minded uh, countries as you know, we are working with India, we're working with Australia, Japan, and others in the region uh, to, to ensure that, uh, that you know, we maintain the freedom of navigation, that, uh, that we do, we're doing the right things to, uh, to promote peace and stability in the region, uh, and that we, we, we really work together to ensure a free and open uh, Indo-Pacific region. Uh, a lot of capability with the capabilities with these various countries and again I think working together with like-minded uh, countries who have shared interests uh, is is the way you check any aggression uh, in, in any region and so that will we'll, you can look for us to continue to do that in the future thank you thank you for being Diplomacy and human rights are an important part of uh, the uh, Biden-Harris administration. Um, since you are the first member of uh, the administration to meet with Prime Minister Modi, did you raise the question of uh, violations of uh, human rights, in the, especially against the Western minority in the Northeast? Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, to answer your question about uh, whether or not I engaged the Prime Minister on that specific issue, I, I did not have an opportunity to talk with him about that. Uh, having said that, um, you know, I did have uh, a conversation with uh, other members of the Cabinet uh, on, this, on this issue, and I think you, we have to remember that India is, uh, is our partner, and, uh, you know, a partner that uh, that who, whose uh, partnership we value, and I think uh, partners need to be able to have those kinds of discussions, and uh, and certainly uh, you know we're uh, we we feel comfortable in, in doing that. So and you can have those discussions in a very meaningful way and still and, and make progress. So. Uh, there is talk of uh, the court being expanded to include countries like South Korea. Is that on the cards? And will Australia now become a permanent member of the Malabar Naval Exercise? Um, I think your question was, is the Quad going to expand to uh, include other countries? Uh, I, again, I, you know, 
from our perspective, uh, we're always willing to work with countries who, sh who share our values and, and have, have like goals and, and aspirations. Uh, and so, you know, whether or not uh, those countries will choose to, uh, to align uh, with, uh, uh, with the United States and others is up to them. But again, we're always willing to, uh, uh, to, to work with folks who share our values and share our, our aspirations. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you. Uh, in the last week, President Biden has uh, said that he could see uh, U.S. troops staying in Afghanistan beyond May 1st. Uh, NBC News has reported that discussions focus on November. Um, as we look at this, um, is that true, especially in light of General Miller, General McKenzie, uh, and some other senior officers raising concerns that the conditions on the ground simply do not merit it at this time? Uh, you know, I'm aware of the, uh, the, there is speculation that the President has made a decision on keeping troops there to November, until November, and, uh, you know, I'm a pretty prominent guy in those discussions, typically, and uh, to my knowledge, the President has, uh, has not made uh, a decision or made any announcements on, uh, on when uh, he'll, he'll decide to, uh, to remove the troops. Uh, so that, as you know, there's a rigorous process that's ongoing as the President really you know, works his way through uh, making that decision. Uh, and no decisions have been made. Uh, no, no decisions on length of stay or, or troop numbers have been made to this point. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. If I could follow up, it, it seems to me and, and many others that we're running into a physics problem at some point if we're going to adhere to that May 1st deadline, uh, just in terms of getting things out safely and in some sort of orderly fashion. How are you going to make this happen if it's actually May 1st? Well, you know, we, we are mindful of uh, uh, the timelines and the uh, requirements that the Taliban has kind of laid on the table. I would just tell you that there's probably nobody who understands the physics associated with removing troops and and equipment out of a place better than me, uh, and uh, and I think that uh, that you know as we work through this process, we'll, we'll keep all those things in mind, and we'll keep as many options open as we can, and, and we'll whatever the decision the, the president makes, uh, you know, you can trust that it'll be fully supportable, so, and and the experts you know, like General Miller and General uh, Milley uh, and uh, General McKenzie. Uh, once given uh, you know, the, the mission to accomplish things one way or the other, uh, they'll get it done and they'll, get, they'll, do, they'll, they'll do a great job of getting it done as well. And we're going to take the last question here, John. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Secretary, do you see Ch uh, India operationalizing its foreign policy enough to deal with China since it's historically been a non-aligned country and also focused on Pakistan? And then just did your conversations touch at all on arms sales such as the MQ-9? Um, or a base access, since I know that's something the U.S. is doing. Well, as you would imagine, with uh, two uh, chiefs of defense, we uh, covered a wide range of uh, topics uh, that, that included uh, equipment. It also included information sharing. Uh, it included oper uh, additional opportunities for uh, assisting each other logistically in just a number of things. And those were really, really good conversations. And quite frankly, I leave those conversations very encouraged about uh, about you know what's what's in the realm of the possible going forward. Uh, we consider India to be a great partner, uh, and uh, and again, I think we we have done a number of things to uh, uh, to work well together. There's just a lot of opportunity there to uh, to 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 strengthen that re uh, that partnership and. And to uh, and to do some things, additional things, to make sure that we're promoting peace and stability in the region, and uh, and providing for uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific uh, region as well. Are they at a point where they're prioritizing the China threat over the, the Pakistan issue as they secure it? I think that's probably better answered by uh, by the Indian government in terms of what their priorities are. Uh, my concern is that uh, uh, 
they they prioritize uh, their relationship with us and their 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 willingness to work with us uh, at the very top of their list of priorities here. So uh, again, uh, in my engagements here, I walk away very encouraged, uh, not only by the by the hospitality that uh, we we've enjoyed while we've been here, but by the forward thinking and forward leaning that that we've witnessed uh, with the, with the Pakistanis. Uh, excuse me, with the Indians. I'm very, very sorry. With the Indians. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.